You're listening to Kizuki, the podcast. I'm Mei Yoshikawa, and I define the Japanese concept of Kizuki as the following Kizuki. One, a moment of epiphany, an aha of realization or insight which opens the knower to a new dimension of truth that was formerly unknown. Two, steps in an incremental growth of awareness. Resulting in a movement from ignorance to greater awareness of the bigger picture. A kind of knowing that cannot be undone, that cannot be unrealized. As a long time yoga and meditation practitioner, a world traveler, and curious self explorer, I'm obsessed with Kizukis. Listen on each week for inspiring and enlightening stories that may just tip you over for your next aha. On this week's episode, why not why? Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me on my first ever solo podcast episode here. I'm recording from my home in Tokyo, Japan, and I thought it would be a perfect opportunity to.、Uh, Tell you a little bit about myself and dive into our first Kizuki episode. That's why, not why. I am a quarter American and three quarters Japanese. I am a mixed breed, a mix everything, really, a Gemini. I definitely have a spiritual side. I've been deep into yoga and meditation for over 20 years now. But I'm also an urban Tokyo girl. I run my own business. I raise two kids on my own. I grew up going to international school in Tokyo, hence my American accent. I like to say sometimes that I look Japanese, I sound American, but I found my heart in South India. I、um, grew up as the youngest of four siblings. Not really. Knowing where I belong, because even though I was born and raised here in the Tokyo metropolitan area, I was never really a part of mainstream culture here, not having gone to Japanese school. And、um, I always loved to travel, I guess, to see the world, to see how different people live in different ways with different ideas and philosophies, yet how common we are as a human race. When I was 14, 15-ish, my parents, after some 26 years of a beautiful marriage and four kids, decided to get divorced, which really crushed me. And I lost my sense of belonging furthermore. Not only did I not know which culture, which language, which people to belong to, I didn't really have a foundational footing in my own home anymore. That was a really, really rough period for me. And it only got rougher a couple years later when my mother, who was half American and half Japanese, developed a rare neurological disorder. It took about two years and nine different university hospitals before they reached a diagnosis, which they finally called atypical Alzheimer type dementia. Young onset, obviously, because my mom at the time. Was 47 when symptoms first started and 49 when they reached the diagnosis. The right hemisphere of her brain started to shrink. She first lost memory and spatial recognition. So she might do some simple motion like putting a stamp on an envelope and she would completely miss the envelope. Or she didn't know how to walk home from the nearby train station anymore. Eventually, she wouldn't be able to look me in my eyes or remember my name. She didn't remember how to use utensils anymore when she ate or to use the bathroom and became a disabled person physically as well as mentally. When all of this went down, I was the youngest in the family. I was 17 when symptoms started and 19 when they reached the diagnosis. And I was just tortured in my own mind. The incessant narrative 
in my mind was, why, why, why? I was just beginning to find my own way through the tumultuous period of my parents' divorce. I was just beginning university. I was just beginning to find again my zest for life. And I couldn't understand why this would happen to me, why this would happen to my mom, why now, why this, why us, why God. And although I never really screamed or yelled or, or even really cried or made a mess of things, I know that I was a mess on the inside. And I just didn't have the wisdom to let it out in safe ways. And this made me sick. I was a depressed insomniac. I was very unhealthy. And I started to go down a slippery slope. So about, oh, I don't know, six to 10 months of that, I decided that I needed to really get a hold of my own health, or it wouldn't just be my mom that was sick, that I would get really sick too in very scary ways. So I visited with doctors, this, that, and the other, but typically they would prescribe antidepressants and sleeping pills for me, which I know can be very helpful for some people, so nothing against that. But for me, I had serious doubts about the whole medical system by then because I had just witnessed my mom go through this two years of um, not having reached a diagnosis. And I didn't think that suppressing the symptoms would help for me because I, I felt like I would be missing the point because n nobody was really getting at the root cause here. And the root cause was that I was severely distressed by these events, these unthinkable events that were unfolding before me to my mom and to my family. I was so lost. I was in such a dark place. And from this dark place, I reached for something, anything that could save me and begin to get me back on the road to health, my own health. And it was around this time that through a series of synchronous events, I found yoga and I discovered how the simple activity of synchronizing breath with movement can really help me to sleep first and eventually to calm my nervous system, and eventually to begin to transform the way that I would witness and treat the thoughts that were going through my own mind. So I started yoga and meditation in combination with yoga and all of the breathing practices. My teacher really only gave me two words, one direction, to sit and meditate. And this is what he said. He said, just observe. I was like, observe what? Do this, do what? But when you're told to observe, you do just that. I observed my body and all the different pains in my sitting position. I observed my breathing. And then I began to observe the thoughts that were going through my mind the thoughts that were stressful, the thoughts that were torturous, as well as the thoughts that were funny or silly, or sometimes I would remember commercial songs and I started to recognize how this information overload was, was painting my internal landscape. And slowly, slowly, weeks, months, and years into this, I think my first big Kizuki, my first big aha was that I am not my thoughts. As in, 
I used to believe, I used to believe every thought I used to have. I thought that was who I was and that was made me who I was, that it was so essential to my being. But no, if you begin to observe and witness your thoughts, you get to choose your thoughts, which ones you want to believe and which ones you like. Well, I like to say swipe left on. Now, three years or so into my yoga and meditation practice, I was still observing the loud, incessant why. Why, mom? Why this disease? Why now? Why us? Why, 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 why? And this was so hard for me to let go of because, again, like I said, I thought that was me. I thought that's what made me who I am, who I was. And I didn't know, I guess, who I would be. I didn't even know that it was an option that you were allowed to let go of that thought, to not have that thought. So this was one of those incremental slow kizukis, but slowly, slowly, I realized that the thought, why, was not serving me, that it was actually making me more sick. And in that recognition, I didn't know the answer to why. I didn't even know if I would ever know, but I could see for the first time that this thought wasn't serving me. And I could maybe release my grip on it. Maybe just tonight, just for the next minute, just for the next several minutes in meditation, let that go, let it loose and see what happens. And slowly, slowly I began to release that relentless grip, that mental grip between my temples. And slowly, slowly, it began to change who I was. Now, I never learned for many years after that why this disease happened to my mom and why at that time and why to me and why to my family why did life have to be so hard? But several years down the line, I did realize, wait, why didn't I ever ask myself, not why? Why not my mom? Why not now? Why not this disease? Why not my family? Would it be more okay if it were some other person's mom? Would it be more permissible if my mom were 90s instead of 40s? Would it be okay if it was some other disease and not this disease? And as I began to flip the thought in my own mind and ask not why instead, I couldn't help but also realize how gourmand, how arrogant and entitled I was to even think in my own head, why, 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 why? As if this shouldn't have happened, this wasn't supposed to happen, as if to say I knew that I was the one who gets to choose what gets to happen and what doesn't. Like, who am I, God himself? Ugh. But of course, we all know that the only reason why we go there is because the alternative is too painful to accept. But I also had to admit that the struggle itself was only causing me more pain. And so with this Kizuki, slowly, slowly, I just began to let go, let it be, let some things be without answers, let some questions be without answers that I might not know, that maybe I don't get to know everything and then that can be okay. And I learned to breathe through it. I learned to move through it. I learned to flow with it and I learned to live my life in relative peace, relative to before and that that would be okay. So, okay, so this is the crazy part. 
about 10 years later, okay, and some 13 years going back and forth between Japan and India and, and diving deep into yoga and becoming uh, an authorized teacher for Ashtanga Yoga and, and all of that, I opened a studio in the heart of the fashion district in Tokyo. I have this beautiful community of people, like-minded seekers that would come in to spend their quiet with us in the serene, beautiful morning studio. And as we were teaching and sharing yoga and meditation, there were a lot of women, I guess I would say, I don't know, 80% women. And when Mother's Day would come around in May, some of the students would support each other, maybe um, give them a flower or write each other cards. And some of the students would write me cards too and say, you know, Mason, I'm happy Mother's Day. We're grateful for you and, and all that kind of beautiful stuff. Well, one woman wrote me this card and she not only said, ha happy Mother's Day, May, for the beautiful son. I had one son at the time that you're raising. She said, I wanna say thank you to your mother, May, because I know, I've heard you talk about, and I also read in one of your books about your mother getting sick and um, such hardship that you went through. But I also know that you said that it was because of that that you started yoga, that you changed your life and your health and your relationship to your mind. And because you did that, and you became a teacher, and now you share the same yoga and meditation and mindfulness with us, with me, you've changed my life. So I want to say thank you and happy Mother's Day to you, Mason. And I also want to say thank you and happy Mother's Day to your mom. And thank you for giving birth to me. And when I read that, it was such a full circle moment, like for the first time I received the answer to my whys. Why this? Why now? Why this disease? Why my mom? And you know, none of this ever makes that okay. It doesn't. But, but it does let me know that there is something much bigger than me at work here. And I am humbled and grateful before that. So today's Kizuki, why not why? If at any point you catch yourself banging your head against a why, see if you can flip that and see how you feel, what you might think if instead you asked yourself, why not? Thank you for listening. Learn more about me in my upcoming book, Kizuki, Realizations Beyond Time and Death, at my website, maey.live, or find me on Instagram at maeyoshikawa.